this poem was not written by me, but it's it's a it's an old one that that I really love, and it says, yeah, it says, relax back, beloved one, into the timeless presence from which shine stardust and storms and love and light. Rest, beloved one, in the mystery that is your source. I read that and I thought that it was just such a nice thing to imagine Peace of knowing gives me peace, and I hope it gives you some peace that, that you're part of the universe. And I'm excited for your next adventure. <laughs> I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had a long life. I'm 87 years old. I've had a wonderful family who support me, and uh, and I love dearly forever. And I'll be I'll be looking down on them and smiling and telling them I love them. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. It was such a release to know that I didn't have to suffer anymore and that it was okay to go, you know, because I had all the support from my family. You know, it was, that was important, really important. Hi, it's Jason. Okay, letting you in. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hello, hi. <laughs> I'm good. good. I'm Jason. I'm Sarah. Yeah, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi again. How are you? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Nice to see you. Uh, same here. Yeah. <laughs> I've been steadily getting worse, uh, like from last year. I've been going downhill with my health, and uh, it got quite bad. Uh, a few months ago, I was in the hospital, and that was, it was horrible. I felt, I felt worse and, and worse. Excuse me, I have to cough. <clears throat> and when I came home, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything for myself. And before, before, in the past year, I should go, go back a little bit. When I, when I had my problems, health problems, Phyllis would take me to all my appointments and she wanted to help me survive, you know. She did everything for me. Uh, she was my angel, she still is. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, got, it got to the point where she came to help me once after I got out of the hospital and I couldn't do anything. She was combing my hair, and that was when 
I thought, you know, I can't do this anymore. I just can't do this. It was too painful. Everything was hurting. I was hurting all over. Uh, I couldn't do anything. And that's when Phyllis supported me in, in, in making that decision that I, I need to go home. It, it's too much. I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. We spent so much time at doctor's offices, you know, getting, getting treatments for arthritis, treatments because she was going blind and, and uh, she could, by, by last fall, she really couldn't go out of the house anymore. We had this tradition of, of Sunday dinners here and, you know, we'd go out and, you know, take her out with the kids. We missed the festival or the Enchanted Forest this year for the first time. But, when, you know, once she decided that, that she wanted to go the maid route, that she could see an end in sight, it completely changed her outlook. I mean, changing your outlook on life when you're, you know, when you've got six weeks to go it, it might sound like a, an odd thing to do, but she was so happy. I can take care of it for him. I'll drink it. She got to spend real quality time. You know, she got to tell her stories, tell us what she wanted us to know, and we got to, we got to ask her what we wanted to know about her life. And it was, it was such a wonderful, you know, a, a wonderful ending to, a, you know, to a life that had been pretty tough over the last few years. You know, your life is in pieces, you know, like, in, your life is always now, right? And to think back, it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to remember all the things that I've done. And some of them have writing and... From, from my great uncle, whose name was Frederick Loveroff, uh, his, all his, so many of his descendants became artists because of him. Wow. They were influenced by mm. his art. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure how to how to paint it, so I just let it hang there. Uh, but it was oil on oil with a palette knife. That was mixed media. I I did a drawing of a hummingbird in a nest. And then I put, uh, oh gosh, you know, I don't remember. I think it was cheesecloth that I sort of uh, pulled apart and glued it on. You didn't always paint within the lines, maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I yeah. was always out of the lines. <laughs> yeah. And she would always decorate the birthday cakes that Phyllis made. So you have to get a little bit in and then... How would you feel about coming and sitting over? Because I mixed so much more plaster than I need. So how would you feel about coming and just setting your hand in here and making a little palm print? Do you feel? Would you feel like that? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And lock it. There. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And just set your hand in there. Okay. You can press it however far you feel like. Okay. I think this one is taking too long, you know, to set. Do you want to take your hand out? I think so. Okay. Just about. It's just yeah. about there. Yeah. Really, with this, you have to kind of you have Check to wait till it's just about set. So yeah. I don't know what I was doing, trying to get her to put her hand in there so straight off the bat. Yeah. It's, I'm you know, sure. it, it's interesting with all of the different things we want to do this week and at this time. To get them all done. To get them all done and then our brains get all scrambled. Yeah. Trying mine. to think of too many things at one time. Okay. Well, 
Well, looks like a little bit of something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> okay, pull this one out. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, uh, maybe one of the kids can paint it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, visualize this looking really good, Grandma. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. I wish I had the, the strength to pull this off, but I don't. Well, it's, I think it's a nice base. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It is, isn't it? <laughs> that's really nice. Yeah, oh, gosh, yeah, it turned okay. out good. Since it was my grandma that taught, taught me this method, uh, when I was here in the fall, I knew it was going to be her birthday while I was here, so I wanted to make a little uh, piece like this for her to to have we the the kids get to talk to her over FaceTime and whatnot but uh, when they don't get to see each other in person as much it's I thought it would be nice for grandma to have something a little more tactile to to uh, be able to to touch when she thinks of them when my my sister went this way too uh, about four years ago, and I, I told her I understood why she was doing that. I, and I said, but I'll miss you. And she said, suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> Which really, I mean, it was a good, the kind of joke that I needed, you know, and that's why I'm hoping my jokes will help others, you know, my family. Hello. Hi. Hi there. Hi, good to see you again. How are you? Hi, Hi. Dr. Weiler here again. So many times in medicine, we end up inflicting on others what we think is best for them. And, very, uh, and, and we're trying to get more into shared decision making. But in this particular aspect, with people who are in the, in the process of dying, it is largely their choice. We make sure they know all of their options. We make sure that they, they meet the criteria for, for the legal component, but in fact, it is largely their decision, as long as they're aware of, of all their options. And so for us, or for me, I should say, it is, it is actually quite positive. So instead of me trying to convince somebody to do something that might be uh, maybe of low benefit and a lot of discomfort, they are telling me what, this is what they would like. And so for me to actually just comply with, with, with what they're wanting, actually, is, is a bit of a reward, to be honest. Uh, having done many things to people in intensive care that they didn't want, this is actually allowing them to do, tell me what they would want. Definitely ready to go. Yeah, she's yeah. got her busy body daughter here, right? What? You have a busy body daughter and, I, and I, grandson. Yeah. That... yeah, not busy body well, helpers. They yeah. help me, mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm so grateful for that. Now that I can't do anything, you know, mm -hmm. and so... It's a good send off. <laughs> it's uh -huh. a wonderful send off. Any other thoughts or? Uh, so could you just go over really quickly? Sure. So really, as, as I've said uh, in our first, first discussion, right. this is really very much sort of based on your timing. It does require that, that you have the ability to give us a final consent mm -hmm. and that you'd give that consent at the time. We have a form to sign. Oh, okay. And, and with that, we usually we have that with you alone to make sure that Okay. No one is, is influencing yeah, your decision. Yeah, I know. And I know. so just to have that, 
that brief time with you. Yes. And then at that time, usually what I do is I would start an intravenous. Sorry, at, I would, that at that time, I would start an intravenous because okay. as we talked, there really is the only option we have is much like an anesthetic where we oh. start an intravenous and give you the drugs that you would have okay. as if you're going to sleep for surgery. Okay. So will I be asleep? when? No. no. And so what we do is we get your consent. The family is just I sign alone, it? outside, you sign that yeah. consent, I would start the intravenous, and then your family comes back into the room, okay. and you have, again, as much time as you need. Okay, and so, I, uh, sorry, can I, can we still be talking to each other? Absolutely. Family? Okay, yeah. no. when I'm... Yeah, and can so... Can you some tea, Dr. Oh, sure. And then, uh, thank you. And then uh, what happens is that you would then tell me when you'd like to proceed. Okay. And at that time... Um, your family can be with you. You can, you can be, you can be in whatever sort of whether you like to be okay. in chair or in a bed. That's those chair sort of things up to you. <laughs> yeah. And your family can be with you, and they can be, oh, you know, talking. You can have music if you'd like. Yeah. And so those sorts of uh, things are something you can think about over the next week yeah. or so. No, you you described how you used to measure your oxygen saturations, and they would fall quite low. Yeah. Remember we talked about that. So yeah. I'm I'm. I'm not surprised. I just wanted to make sure that things were about the way they were, or maybe had progressed a little bit by the sounds of it. So. I think what it is, it's just, in a sense, it's kind of like a another option to palliative care and other kind of assistance at the end of life. It's not going to, clearly, it's not going to be for everybody. There are going to be many people, and I, I very much respect people's decisions to not include medical assistance in dying in their thought process at the end of their life or for their families. But there are uh, a number of people, I, I see, I've yet to know what kind of percentage that will be, who really for them it's a very important aspect to have this control, to be able to, to control, for example, the, the environment. So they know when the family's around, they want to be able to be with them. They want to know they're not going to be in a hospital, for example, they might want to be in their own home. And that's, for, for many people, that's just an important part that MAID offers them. Because like I said, it's not something we're promoting. It's not something that we're saying people should consider right away. But for many people, they want to have that as an option. And I think that the law tried to recognize that. So I've got a question for you. Now that you've had a chance to think about it okay. for a week or so, has it been easier knowing that this option is available? Does it help you to know that? To know that? To know that you have that option available? Oh, yes, yes. Does that allow you yes. a little better chance to yeah. Get some sleep and be relaxed? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen mom this calm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to say this happy, but it's something very similar to that. Mm -hmm. Relieved. You know, relieved, relieved. Mm -hmm. and I calm. Am. And, yeah. you know, just the notion of being with her family yeah. so yeah. much. This has been a really nice interim. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and before that, well, it was... You know, being that sick and not knowing what comes next. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You know, to you know, just to be suffering all of that with no end right. in sight, it's a completely different story. With Jeanette, once I got to know her and made sure she knew all of her options and, and, and she she knew it was, it was largely making sure that I didn't get in her way. Because she wasn't somebody who who uh, she she was somebody who was self directed through her entire life and, and like I said, I think it would not have been wise. To, uh, to try to convince her of other ways that, that she was quite clear, as, as when, you, when you meet her or had met her, she, she was very clear, understanding what her options were, and also very clear about why she came to this decision. And all you had to do was spend an extra five minutes, and she will explain to you how she came to that conclusion. So, I've already chosen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. All yeah. right. And like I said, the main thing is that you know what your choices are, and that you always have that ability to... I don't. Extend your time. I'm aware. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remarkable life. Yeah. 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 It's been a full one. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy to have had my wonderful family and have been able to do my art. Yeah. I've had a long, full life and I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. I can't, I can't live life anymore with, with uh, my, my problems, yeah. So, like I said, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Hold on tightly, but let go lightly.
and know that you love we love you so much grandma i love you too i know Here, take that corner. I love this. Ooh, it's so shimmery. Someone could wear this as a shimmer. Yeah. Okay, let's do the other side. You having a good time? Other side? Okay. Yeah. Okay, turn it over. Thank you for this. Here's a play for anyone who wants to do their hand. You could put a little arrow <laughs> this side up. What color do you want? Pink first, pink first. Pink first. Pink first. Oh, makes a nice finish. It does. You should have done the whole thing. Yeah. Just yeah. anywhere? Yeah. No, then my hand print would be there. Is that all of them? Yeah. Okay. Which shade of red do you want? Can you paint it? Or you paint it on your hand. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, which blue? He wants blue too. There's like five different blue shirts. But there's like, I think there's actually two. Can I have the whole piece of blue? Yeah. You know when you put your hand down flat like that? Who's talking? One of your girls sounds a light green. You don't sound like a real stupid. You have to hang around a while and you can take it sounds like that. A little bit, and I go here and I'm blue. Load it on Terry real quick. You've been serious. Just put, you know what? I'm here, there's a glob at the top of it. And give me a glob. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Just send me on. <laughs> it's one of my favorite sayings. Um, life doesn't get easier, you get better. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what we're doing here is creating a altar for all of the things that we like to offer to Grandma to take with her, as well as all the pictures of, of family represented in there for her to also take with her. Good? Yeah, that's good. Can everybody else hear it too? No? Oh so, wow, that's a good idea. She wants to run as fast as she can. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here. I know it must be hard. An energy for me and all of them. Thank you. Yeah.
No. First? No, I can't do the stairs. Oh, yeah. I love you. I always have. I'm sorry I can't come visit, but it's very hard for me. I will think about you forever. Oh. You know, we can have as much time as we want. <laughs> I think, Mom, before they do put the before they put the medicine in, we will put your feet up okay. so that you're propped up okay. and you don't fall over. Okay. So you yeah. can you can rub right. Her that feet was something goes. that we were talking yeah. about. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. The doctor's going to come in about half an hour. He's going to talk to Grandma alone for a little while, just to, she's, he's got to get final cons consent, and by law he has to make sure that nobody is making her do this. Um, so he's going to come in, he's going to talk to her, and then he's going to put an IV in. And then at that time, so in about half an hour, it'll take him about ten, five, ten minutes. Uh, when he does get when he does get the IV in and that's done, he's gonna go and sit in the dining room, and then uh, then it'll be time for us to all say goodbye to her, and we can, you know, I think everybody needs their space for their hug and stuff like that. And then when it's time to go, he's gonna come back. Um, Sandra and I are gonna hold her hands. To have somewhere for our love to go yeah um and so in ceremony of of this so here's the the heart that we've all charged with our love thank you so much thank i you. love you so much can i take this with me then yes please i think grandma always be in our heart and I'm so moved by your building my sarcophagus. <laughs> <laughs> I am really. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Oh, That's very welcome. Yeah. Thank you for a lovely daughter. She saved oh. my life. Oh, and you hers. Yeah. Everybody thinks I'm brave, but I'm actually relieved that I don't have to suffer. Hi Dustin, I love you so much and I'll miss your presence, your physical presence, but I'll be I'll be watching over you and sending all my love and and uh, and smiling down on you proudly. You are a wonderful person and and I've loved you from the first day of your birth until until now and then I'll love you forever from the other place, from the other realm. I love you, Dustin, so, so much. And you take care and and uh, have, a, have a wonderful, happy life. And we'll meet again someday, I know that. And I, until then, know that I love you forever. It's about pennies and crows and and uh, robins and, and the smell of strong coffee We'll see you again. Hi, Grandma. Lots of love from your little plum. Aww. Thank you so much for all the great memories. Love you. Aww. My little plum. I love you guys all so much. All of you. We know that. And we yeah. love you right back. I shall forever stay silly in your memory. Aww, love yeah. You. And I love that, too. That's for you. I oh. just drew it now. Hi, doctor. Okay. <laughs> You're the only one who can tell me if today's the day. Pardon me? You're the only one who can tell me if today is the day. Yeah, yeah, today is the day. Today is the day for sure. Yeah, for positive. And you've thought about it? Yes. That's and no I've got support from all of my family, mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful for that. Yes, because it's time for me to go. I can't even climb the stairs by myself. I've had to... Uh, 
three people help me up and three people help me down, mm -hmm. and I just can't. I can't be here anymore. Okay. I can't take care of myself. Now, if, is it okay if I tell everyone what what we're going to do? Yes, yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay. And so, and when that's, I'm just going to explain to you what I'm doing. So, when she's by herself, Jeanette Loden, right. your name. And so do you know what all of your other options are? We've yeah. talked about all the other options, yes. but you'd rather us go ahead with this today. Absolutely. If that's what you want, I will give you the medications through an intravenous that will okay. cause you to go to sleep forever. Yeah. If that's what you want, I'll get you to sign this if okay. you can. Okay. As soon as you give me the information, I'll, I will go. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll explain things. There'll be nothing in a hurry. <laughs> okay. Right I got to turn it this yeah, way. Sure. I can't even see how, oh, you're doing how to write. So you think things have gotten a little bit worse over time? Pardon? Things have gotten a little bit yeah, worse? Yeah, yeah, quite a bit worse. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put this here. You'll need this vein, right? This is probably the best one here. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, but if I can do these ones, this one's work. It's, it's good? Okay, good. I'll use the smallest I can use. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. Sorry about this book. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Got music in playing. So this is what is it actually? This is just a small little intravenous. Yeah, but what is it? It gives you nothing. Pardon? It'll give you nothing. I'll show you. Okay. It's. Is it to make me drowsy? I give you nothing. It's got nothing yet. Oh, okay. Nothing. okay. Nothing. It's just to give an intravenous. Just okay. to okay. just to start something. Okay. Do we need another one here or not? I think we're okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, I'm going to leave you alone for a bit and you can visit. Okay. Without a doubt, you can't be around people who've explained uh, how they view the quality of their life and how they want to have their life end without reflecting on it yourself, for sure.
I love you guys. Stuff. In so many deaths, there isn't one where I don't have some regrets that I didn't ask about this or I didn't talk to them for the week before they died or, you know, something happened where I still have wishes, you know. I still wish I could do this or, you know, hold her or, or something. And I think for every one of us, you know, there was closure. There was, you know, we... All of the things we wanted to say were said. And, you know, we were able to, to say goodbye in such a in such an intimate, intimate way that I really don't think that anybody has any regrets at all. Oh, well, here's her degree. <laughs> <laughs> That's her BFA. She was fifty-five when she got her BFA. It's like so many things. You you have a personal opinion on on many things, but I didn't want to certainly did not want to put my opinion on to other people. And to tell you the truth, seeing the um, I'm going to say relief, seeing the relief that uh, Jeanette had uh, with the end in sight and participating in it. Uh, made me a bit of a convert. I, I, I have some enthusiasm. It, it, it may not be for everybody, and I'm not. I'm not trying to convince people one way or the other. But I think that you have to keep an open mind about things like that. And um, I, I, I think it was very rewarding in the long run. Okay, so these are the different grants that she got from the Arts Board. When I started going Names through the process, I mean, Mum asked me towards the end of December this is, if uh, um, if this would be something we could do for her to go through the MAID program. She was really worried about what everybody else would think. She was so sick, you know, she was just terribly, terribly ill at that point. And when we started going through the process, I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to do all of this? How will I get all of this done? And in reality, it, it, it was so seamless. I, I called the people at MAID, you know, I talked to the, the woman that answered the phone and she said, well, you know, we'll, we'll take care of all of this for you. They set up the appointments, you know, they filled out the forms. Uh, the doctor came, I mean, we had, we had two doctors that we were working with, and they came and they visited her. 
they asked about her life. They asked about why, why she wanted to do this. And they asked her if she knew what all of the options are. She could go into palliative care. She could, you know, she could get home care. But they listened to her. And when, you know, when she explained why she wanted to do this, they really did care. And they didn't, you know, there was no argument. It was, they were so supportive. And right until the very end, you know, they took the time to get to know her, to know about her life and to know about what she wanted and to know about her family and how her family would be and how they would react to it. And I think it's really important for people to understand what those, what those people do. It's, you know, I can't imagine how difficult it would be but yet they do it with such grace and such comfort. And, you know, they guided us all the way through it. They kept checking up on me. You know, are you doing okay? Um, I texted back and forth with, with Dr. Weiler. And so it was, it was them going through it with us. And I don't think people can real, or really do or could understand how how amazing and wonderful the people that that are helping people go through the MAID program are. Hmm. So if we're going to have to find room to store it because it'll take forever to scan it. One of the real privileges we have in doing this work is that people will let us into their lives at oh, a very tough. intimate and and red hot zone of, of, of their of their life and the end of their life. And so it's better for us to actually have a really good opportunity for them to share their life so we can understand why this has become an important option for them. And by doing that, we have met some incredible people, Jeanette being one of them, where they've had full lives. You know, as you can see, her, her, her life was not just ones of complex and deep relationships with, with family and, and supporting others as, as friends, but her, her development as an artist and her, her kind of development of that as a late on kind of just demonstrates to me how we sometimes don't appreciate just how full many people's lives are. And we have this privilege of meeting them and, and literally getting them to share with us that sort of fullness and and it's and, and like I said it is such an informative part to learn about people who I think think often think of themselves as having regular lives but in fact they're all very extraordinary lives. After she died we had already gone through that grieving process we had gone through the sadness and you know thought about what we were going to do when she was gone and you know she had her instructions you know she told my granddaughter you need to be happy don't she was my granddaughter was worried about her birthday about how could she have fun on her birthday which is next week and and you know grandma reassured her that that's all that she wanted was for her to have, be happy and to enjoy her life and she could be sad but not so sad that it stopped her from doing things that that makes her life worthwhile, which is the same message she gave to, to all of us. You know, live your life, be kind, be happy. And so that those last, those last few days and the last few weeks were really important. And the other thing was Bob and my dad were funny. She thinks they're absolutely... <laughs> In my mind, it was a, a beautiful death, and it left all of us with a better understanding of what it is to die, what it is to, you know, to take that next step and to be able to take, you know, to be able to have agency and, and take control 
of your life rather than what would have happened next, which would have been going into palliative care. That would have just been the most horrible thing for her. So it was, like I said, it was a, it was a good death, I think. And as sad as we all were that day and as we'll continue to be, I know, I think we all had that opportunity to, you know, to be sad with her, to get comfort from her and to, and to really understand things about life and death that we had never understood before. Yeah, Grandpa will put his sign up and then this is what they look like. So Mama's going to help you guys put the ashes in. Sarah is going to put the basket in and then you guys can put the ashes in. Okay, do you want to get your shovel and you can help Paul? Sure. Okay. You know, they loved her, and we loved her. Thank you.